She was a talented yet troubled performer. Her name was Amy Winehouse, and her death rocked the world. People talking about it because uh, her youth, her talent, she's troubled. We're here with Nancy Barrows, DJ Buck, Hot 937. Before we start, this tattoo is distracting me I'm so right sorry. here. Let, 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 let me see this. Show this tattoo. What is this tattoo about? Is that a brand new tat? Um, it's it's about two years old, but it's a blue hair. See that? Okay. <laughs> It is throwing me off, but Sorry about that. that's a lot of meaning. It means something. Yeah. <laughs> so this is death, Amy Winehouse, mm. 27. Why were folks so fascinated by the death? Why sort of the worldwide response to this artist? I think I think a lot of people they, they watched her rise and almost fall in the public eye because the drugs took over her body and they almost knew it was going to happen. When it happened, it was inevitable that it would happen. I think people knew that a week for, a week before it happened. Nancy did a story saying that, you know, that if she doesn't get help, this will happen. And then it happened the next week. Did it add to her appeal, the fact that she was so troubled? It no, was... I, think, I think it's it's that morbid curiosity where you, where you see something happening. It's a train wreck, and you really don't want it to happen, but it does. It's like Jim Morrison, and it's like, you know, Nirvana with Kurt Cobain. You didn't want it to happen, but you saw they were in pain, and, you know, and they were addicted to drugs. You mentioned Kurt Cobain. There's a, this whole issue called the Curse of 27, yeah. 20, where a bunch of artists have died at 27 in their prime, yeah. many with drug issues. Let's take a look at some of the music legends who have made the 27 Club. Mm -hmm. They tried to make me go to rehab. I said no, no, no. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back, oh, no. My daddy thinks I'm fine. They try to make me go to rehab. I won't go, go, go. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back, oh, no, no, no. I ain't got the time. And if my daddy thinks I'm fine. Again, here is DJ Buck, Nancy Barrow. Did your audience have any thoughts on? Some of these artists dying over a period of time in 27, did you get any unusual comments from folks who commented on this? I think for the most part, people are saying it's just, just drugs. I mean, once you get to that level of fame, people use, they, the artists seem to use these drugs to calm them down, you know, to try and take them away from everything, but they get addicted to it, and then the drugs take over them. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the you culture, know? though, right? Sex and drugs is part of the entertainment culture. Is it ever going away? It will it ever go away? Is that sort of part and parcel of what it's, it's, it's all about? It happens in our neighborhoods. It just happens that these people are famous and, you know, their addiction seems to be heightened so much more when your neighbor might be on it, too. I mean, drugs are prevalent everywhere, but unfortunately they're so famous and people follow them. You know, and I think that some people just can't handle fame. Yeah. I mean, Amy Winehouse was clearly uncomfortable when she was, yeah. you know, there. She didn't like it and... She, you know, that was what came with her fame, but she did not like being in the spotlight at all. But you met so many artists. I'm going to assume that a lot of artists you meet don't really like, they're very quiet people behind the scenes. They're introverted by nature. Michael Jackson being the right. classic example, right? right? right, right. Off the, when the lights are off, he's very quiet and shy. Mm -hmm. How many stars have you met where the reality is that when they're on camera, they're a whole different person than when they're off? There's tons of them. Yeah. For 50 Cent, there's nothing like you see on TV. Mm -hmm. How so? Um, he's a lot quieter. He's, he's a lot... He's a better person in person. When you when you see on TV is an act. He, mm -hmm. is what he wants you to believe he is. But when you get on one-on-one, -on -one, he's nothing like that. He talks about everyday stuff. Talks about his kids. Mm -hmm. Talks about sports. It's a normal guy. Who else would surprise you, Sarah, someone you see on screen who's different off stage? I don't know. I think the, a lot of people are pretty comfortable with their fame. Like Wiz Khalifa. Beyonce. Beyonce. Beyonce is or isn't? Oh, she's super sweet. Yeah. I didn't expect her to be so down to earth, but she was super, super nice and, and really engaging. How about Biggie? Biggie lived that lifestyle. He was a rapper who was from the streets, so what you heard on the record and what you saw, that's what it was. But he knew it was a game too, though, right? He, he knew it was a game too, but he didn't change, he didn't sway too much from what he grew up on. He rapped out what he went through, you know? And so he was pretty much the same guy. So Winehouse's legacy will be, what, at 27 with the drugs, the relationship issues? Gone too soon. It's mm -hmm. such a tragic thing, but it happens every day. And I think that was uh, some of, the, some of the, the problems. Like, you know, you look at Snoop Dogg, you know, someone gave him drugs when he was nine. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, some of these people can handle it, and some of the people can't. Mm -hmm. 
two guys who are handling their fame well. I say one guy, Jay Z's handling his fame well. You'd argue that Kanye had that implosion a, a year or so ago. They're collaborating now, right? Big album coming out. Yeah, yeah. a lot of yeah. pressure, right? When you're yeah. Kanye and you're Jay Z and you're collaborating, it better be good. It is good. Is it going to be good? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Watch the throne. Watch the throne. Is going to be good. Have you heard the early release of all the? We have Otis out. Uh, We have the first single that came out last week, and it just we played it like twenty times. It's from Otis Redding. He made the beat. Kanye produced the whole beat, and it's just it's just really amazing. Yeah. It's fantastic. Now, what about this one, H-A-M or Ham or whatever the... That was the first one that came out a few years ago. That was okay. Yeah, that, that was, was pretty out, good. Yeah. But yeah, Otis, but you like Otis? Otis yeah. is good. It's a setup record. The real record's going to come in about about two or three weeks. Yeah, can you give us a tease? What is this going to be called? Do you have a title for that one? No, it won't have the title yet. I'll find out Monday. I'm going to a record release party Monday with Kanye and Jay-Z, so I'll be there and I'll find out. And I'll let you know. So, the ego's in the room. I mean, how does that get, you know, managed? That, those are two Tim enormous Tim. egos. Jay-Z's ego isn't like Kanye's What's ego. he like? What's, what's Jay-Z like behind the scenes? I think Jay- Jay-Z's a really cool guy. When right. we interviewed him, he was just really a nice person. Quite, you know, doesn't want to really give too much of his personal life, but, right. you know, that's, that's who he is. And how about Kanye? Kanye's Kanye. He's going to be cocky. Kanye's going to be cocky, cocky all and, the time. You know, it, it and that's depends. Him. You know, that is him. That's him. The issue with uh, Taylor Swift, that surprised you guys, or was that him also? Was Blame it on the Henny? That, that didn't surprise me. No? No, Not it didn't really surprise didn't me at all. surprise me. I mean, you know, when he, he's, he's, a, he's a crazy guy. He'll do whatever he feels he needs to do. So they're going on tour now pretty soon to launch this album. Uh, what are your thoughts now as far as the Hartford community? How hyped up are folks here to kind of get to hear all that? What are they talking about? What, what, what are you hearing from we the audience? We were just talking about that. We were just talking about I think the Hartford community are upset that the concert is not coming here. Yeah. You know, it Why was, wouldn't it? Just um, dates? The dates, but uh, I think they'll add dates. They always make a, a schedule on the beginning, and then they end up adding dates. The last date is in Boston, and I can see us trying to get them to come here a little while after that. How much money are we talking about Ooh. with these two guys together? Oh, we talking about <laughs> what are we talking about? Half billion? Is that too Jay-Z small? Jay-Z by himself would be like 300000 or 500000 Well, I, I mean, as far as the album, all the money they'll make word while in 15 seconds, what will they make off this tour, the money, the album, the, re, the he has whatever? He Nation. He has yeah, so like, much yeah. Are we talking about half a billion dollars? Half a billion, yeah, they'll make it one half a billion that's, dollars. That's, that's real money, right? That's, that's, oh, yeah. that's real money. That's a week's <laughs> worth of uh, work for you. Yeah, for me, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> want to thank our guests, folks. Jeff Jacobs, DJ Buck, and Nancy Barrow. Don't forget, catch our show 24-7 at ctnow.com slash Stan, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter for the good folks here at Fox Connecticut. I'm Stan Simpson. The morning news is next.